Hi everyone, my name is Peter Corrales and I'm one of the attorneys here at Corrales Law Group and today I'd like to make this video to give you guys some uh, tips and pointers for um, specifically for the people that are attending an adjustment of status interview that was based on the family petition. So normally um, we prepare our clients before their interview date and we give them some tips and we tell them exactly what to expect on the date of the interview. So I want to make this video and just give some tips and pointers for anyone that is uh, expecting to attend an adjustment of status interview uh, near you. So let's get started. First, make sure the petitioner and beneficiary are present on the day of the interview. Um, if you're having an adjustment of status interview, it probably means that you're either being petitioned for or petitioning a spouse or being petitioned for by a child. Um, one of the steps of the interview process is that the adjudicator will verify to make sure that it's a bona fide relationship. So it's a parent-child relationship or a spouse relationship. So make sure both of you go because you will both be asked questions. Uh, very important. Tip number two, please bring an interpreter if, you, if it's necessary. If you have some difficulty with the English language, it's very important because a lot of adjudicators you know, um, do have an issue with someone that is, is not understanding all the questions. Um, plus, it'll make your life a lot easier if you have an interpreter there to uh, assist you. It'll give you a little extra time to think about the questions. Um, it'll be in your native tongue. Um, everyone is nervous as it is. So the day of your adjustment of status interview is not the time to um, to shortcut and try to understand some of these technical terms and it can be get a little complicated so uh, please bring a tra uh, an interpreter if you need one um, the person has to be a neutral party so no immediate family members and they have to be over 21 years of age uh, tip number three very important bring originals of everything you submitted so if you submitted an I-130 and 485 package you submitted a lot of evidence proving the relationship um, you submitted uh, taxes for the 864, bring originals of all those documents. Um, especially in a marriage case, you want to bring the original marriage certificate, uh, birth certificates, you want to bring the original pictures that you submitted. Um, the easiest way to go about this, which I tell my clients, is um, at the time when you're, when you're attorney or when you're putting everything together to submit uh, the package to USCIS, you want to just keep everything you sent in a folder that way on the day of the interview you have this nifty folder and it has all of the proof in it you just bring it with you um, a lot of times the adjudicator the first thing they'll ask is for you to put all the originals out on the desk and they'll look through them to make sure that uh, the copies that you submitted uh, match the original documents so very important bring originals of all documents and also if there's any updated information for instance uh, for the 864 if uh, there was a change in jobs or a change in income bring more recent pay stubs and more recent um, bank statements to prove this. Um, very important, some adjudicators really focus on the 864, so you wanna make sure that you cover all bases, um, bring updated documents if you have some, even updated pictures if you wanna bring some on the day of the interview. If you need more information about what to submit with the I-130, uh, you wanna watch Janice's video about what to send in for a marriage petition. Okay, uh, tip number four, act as if as if the relationship is is real so we all get very a lot of people get very nervous at their adjustment of status interview so for instance husband and wife uh, make sure you're acting like husband and wife um, if you have wedding rings wear them on that day um, the adjudicator is watching um, your interaction to see if the relationship is real so um, it's a little more difficult with parent child but between spouses you know um, understand that they are looking at you to make sure that it's a, it's a valid marriage. So keep that in mind the day of the interview. Um, tip number five, look over all the applications you've submitted. So um, if you're doing an a adjustment of status based on a family petition, you probably submitted a lot of documents, including marriage certificate, uh, you know, a lot of documents. Make sure you look over all that before the day of the interview, including the forms you submitted. So the I-130, the 485, the 864, you want to look over all that because a lot of the questions you're going to be asked on the day of the interview are those same questions. So they're going to ask you, you know, um, what are your parents' names? Where were, where were they born? Where are they now? All these, all these answers are found on the 325A, which should have been submitted originally. So if you haven't sent your package yet, make sure you take a, a photocopy of everything before you send it in. If you have an attorney, uh, ask for a copy of the forms that were sent in so that you can look over them. Um, you know, you want to look over the security questions on the four, uh, 485 to make sure you understand them. And you just, 
it's just a general good practice to look over them. So a lot of times we'll give our, our clients a copy of their forms and just have them uh, briefly look over them, make sure their employment history is correct, their, their address history, because a lot of the questions will be based on this. Um, number six, be honest. So on the date of the interview, it's very important to be honest. Um, if you've been screened for eligibility and you know you're eligible, there's no reason to lie about anything. Um, you know, we have had some instances where someone has lied about their criminal history and it really turns the interview sour. So, um, you know, be honest. Uh, if you have some sort of criminal history, uh, come forth with it because the adjudicator will have your background um, from when you did your biometrics before the interview. Uh, number seven, make sure everyone dresses appropriately. So generally, uh, this isn't an issue for the petitioner and the beneficiary, but sometimes if you are bringing a family friend in as an interpreter or, or something of that nature, or like uh, sometimes the younger younger people are, are more prone to um, not dress appropriately. Um, just make sure that you tell everyone how important this is to you, and that you would like them to dress appropriately. Because appearances, you know, unfortunately appearances do matter. So you want to look um, your best on that day. The adjudicator, like I said, is watching you, um, trying to verify all the information. So dress appropriately. Um, number eight, uh, what can happen at the interview? So it's very rare that if you are eligible, they will just deny you the day of the interview. Um, there's two most likely scenarios. Uh, number one, they will approve you on that date, and if they do, um, the adjudicator will tell you so, and you will receive an approval notice in the mail uh, very shortly after, followed by your um, residency card in the mail. So um, that's one of the scenarios. Another scenario is if you didn't submit all the required documentation or the adjudicator feels like there needs to be more evidence about one of the elements um, let's say the co-sponsor is, is you know needs to submit updated financial records and you didn't bring them that day the adjudicator can ask you to submit additional evidence so generally what happens is they'll give you a, a, a document and it'll say what they want you to submit and by what date if that happens it's very important that you follow those instructions and submit the, the required documents before that date or else your application will be denied so uh, if that's the case, submit the required documentation um, and then wait for an answer in the mail. Um, tip number nine, hire an attorney if you feel overwhelmed. An adjustment of status uh, and a family petition can be overwhelming for, for uh, people to handle themselves. If you feel very uncertain, you might want to ask an attorney at least for a consultation. Um, a lot of attorneys charge just, just for looking over and they, they'll look over all your forms to make sure there's nothing missing. Um, it is an overwhelming process, so um, if you need help, hire an attorney or have someone look over, over um, your forms because you are making an investment, um, an adjustment of status just by itself right now is costing about 1070 so it's in a big investment for you to um, you know, short, shortcut. Um, so my name is Peter Corrales, again, I'm one of the attorneys here at Corrales Law Group, and if you have any questions or concerns, you're more than welcome to email me or leave comments below, and either myself or Janice, the other attorney, will answer them. So thank you, and have a great day, and good luck at your interview.